Red Shark NAB 2024 coverage is sponsored by... Let's see what we've got going on with Premiere Pro. We are introducing a brand new audio workflow. And we're really excited about this because it reduces mouse mileage. All that time spent dragging the mouse around. If you really think about it, you're just dragging your mouse for miles and miles. Like literally, that's what your hand's doing. And all the clicking. And so we're reducing the clicks and you can get to your final mix faster with these AI uh, powered tools. So we have new visual fade handles. You can click on the clip and just create the fade. And it's really great because you can have a visual of the exact nature of the fade and you can look at your sequence and see what's going on in it. It's really great. No more hunting around or right clicking or anything like that. And then we have uh, audio category tagging as well. So when you add clips into the sequence, it recognizes it as dialogue, music, sound effects, or ambiance. And it adds a little cute little badge, and you can click on that badge, and it'll open the essential sound panel right there. And we have the most relevant tools for that audio type available right there, including enhanced speech for dialogue, which is amazing. One click cleans up poorly recorded dialogue, just like that, and a little mix and out slider as well. In addition, we have uh, redesigned clips, uh, new effects badges. So you can right click on that, add effects and adjust effects straight from the timeline. And you can click on that and open the effect control panel. So all these panels that have been hidden away that you had to look for, one click access from the timeline so you can get right into the work. And then the clips, we have new colors and uh, waveforms that intelligently resize with track height, which is really great to have that visual. So it looks beautiful as well, these clip colors. We're really excited to be bringing this into the next version of Premiere Pro. We've also got some text-based editing updates. My yes. fave. Uh, we introduced text-based editing last year. It makes editing video as simple as copying and pasting text. We've got a lot of community feedback, which is amazing. So we've introduced the ability to delete a speaker so you can remove all of the interviewer from your, your, your timeline and only see the answers, for example. We also added markers. So you can add markers into your, your, into your transcript and you have visuals you can highlight, you can do a spam marker, you can leave notes. So as you're reading and hunting for the perfect soundbite and wanna save it for later, just add that marker and you'll always see it. And it's like, it's even more like editing a Word document to edit the video. So we're really excited about that, currently in beta and coming to Premiere Pro in the very next version. Do you, do you remember like coming up in the industry and getting your first editorial jobs and having like these 20, 30 minute interviews? How many, how many hours would we spend just like manually working on the cut downs to get to like the juicy morsels of the best talk tracks from the speaker? The thing that gets me is when a producer would say, I know that they said this, they said this, and then you have to listen, you start questioning reality, yeah. and then you're like, uh, the producer says, oh, we said that during lunch, we weren't rolling. Oh, now you can just search for that text and then you know right away. It's been really amazing. I use text-based editing all the time. I do some video editing for a nonprofit and I'm able to just go through these interviews that I do so fast and assemble these rough cuts. And I think even craft a better story because I'm able to visualize it a lot better. So it's, it's really, I don't use this term lightly, but it has been game changing for me personally. Totally, and, and uh, text-based editing util utilizes assistive AI, which we were talking about earlier. Right. What are some of the other assistive technologies that we have to tell folks about at home that you can use right now in Premiere Pro? Yes, right now in Premiere Pro, we have a ton of AI-powered features. We've had them for a long time. Scene edit detection, which uh, re-adds the cuts into a finished video, so you can go back and edit more. Auto color and color match to get to a starting point a lot faster with matching cameras or just balancing out the color. Speech to text, of course, in 18 languages, and then the ability to add captions. Um, enhanced speech, of course, as well. And um, we also have my favorite uh, remix. So you can uh, lengthen or shorten a song just by dragging it and it'll rewrite the waveform for you. So we have a lot of these AI power tools that have already been in the product for a long time. And it's just really fantastic to be able to continue to build on that legacy and listen to the community and save y'all a lot of time. That's amazing. Can I add one more thing before we go? Apple log support. Yes. It's a tiny little quality of life improvement, but it makes a big difference. You know, our iPhone 15 Pros now, they all record yes. ProRes log. I have some 4K. of my cat. Yes, I saw that in the demo also. I have some of picking up my son from daycare. Um, but either so way, accessible. it's just crazy that in this phone, we have more filmmaking power than what we had could, could spend $10,000 on just like 10 years ago. But either way, when you bring your Apple log uh, ProRes, 
into Premiere Pro, we're gonna automatically tag that metadata that it's Apple Log. We're gonna automatically transform into SDR, into HDR with better tone mapping, yeah. so that you can also drop a LUT on and override the color management if you want to, so you have a way better experience color grading footage from iPhones in Premiere Pro. I'm gonna one more thing, your one more thing. Please one more thing, my one more thing. <laughs> one of the labs that we are showing here is top community requests because you know, NAB is often about a lot of big major features and we've got that going for us, but we have a lot of quality of life of community requests. So we are looking at always introducing these little features that really help out people. And one of my favorites is label color presets. So if you work on across different teams, getting all your timelines to look the same has been challenging before. Yeah. And so now what we have the ability to do is create a preset for your label colors. And you can change the colors, you can change the names. And we also have some example presets already built in, including editorial. So instead of the, the color name, they put the editorial asset, like video, the effects, things like that. And then so when you're when you're hunting through your sequence, you know exactly you can right click at a label that says, you know, this is a VFX shot. So when you're doing VFX polls later, you can just say, I want all the pink ones, you know. So that came directly from the community and a number of other ones as well. So we really listen to that community feedback and deliver on those with every release to kind of sprinkle them in too.